In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is May 13th. This was the day when the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared for the first time on the home oak tree to the three shepherd children, Lucia, who was nine, and Francisco, who was seven, and Jacinta, who was only six. She was very young. These three children were chosen by God, as the angel told them the previous fall in, in 1916, God has prepared great designs. He has great plans for them. And the angel even asked them, why are you playing? <laughs> you should be praying. And of course, the angel knows children play. St. John Bosco used to say, yeah, play, run, laugh, sing, but don't sin. But these children had a special role. And on this day, the angel told them to come. Well, actually, they were out watching the sheep. And when it was midday, it was cooler in the spring. And this is when they saw a flash of light. And it caught their, their attention. They just thought it was lightning. So they went to the cave because they were expecting the rain to hit. But there was no rain. And here's the account. High up on the, from Sister Lucia's memoirs, high up on the slope of the Cova Diria, I was playing with Jacinta and Francisco at building a little stone wall around a clump of, of trees. Suddenly we saw what seemed to be a flash of lightning. We'd better go home, I said to my cousins. That's lightning. We may have a thunderstorm. Yes, indeed, they answered. We began to go down the slope, hurrying the sheep along towards the road. We were more or less halfway down the slope, and almost level with a large home oak tree that stood there, when we saw another flash of lightning. Now I brought with me a relic that's, that's on the altar, with a little sliver of that tree on which Our Lady stood, and a piece of the a cof, <coughs> a piece of the coffin of Jacinta and and Francisco. So after Mass, I'll I'll uh, offer that for veneration. You can come and kiss the relics and a piece of that tree that Our Lady stood on, which. And, and then she says, We had only gone a few steps further when there, before us, standing on a small home oak tree, we beheld a lady all dressed in white. She was more brilliant than the sun and radiated a, a light more clear and intense than a crystal glass filled with sparkling water when the rays of the burning sun shine through it. We stopped, astounded before the apparition. We were so close, just a few feet from her, that we were bathed in the light that surrounded her, or rather which radiated from her. And here's now the message of May 13th, 1917. Then Our Lady spoke to us, Do not be afraid, I will do you no harm. And little Lucia asked, Where does your grace come from? I am from heaven. What does your grace want of me? Our Lady said, I have come to ask you to come here for six months in succession on the thirteenth day at this same hour. Later on I will tell you who I am and what I want. Afterwards, I will return here yet a seventh time. Shall I go to heaven too? Yes, you will. And Jacinta? Yes, she will go also. And Francisco? He will go there too, but he will have to say many rosaries. Then I remembered to ask about two girls who had died recently. They were friends of mine and used to come to my home to learn weaving with my eldest sister. 
So little Lucia asked, Is Maria das Neves in heaven? She was about 16 years old when she died. And Our Lady said, Yes, she is. And Amelia? And Our Lady said, She will be in purgatory until the end of the world. It seems that Amelia was about 18 to 20 years old. And a priest who did a little research to find out what was her life like, that she would be in purgatory <laughs> till the end of the world, uh, the priest simply put it this way. There were some improprieties against chastity. Are you willing to offer yourselves to God, Our Lady said, and bear all the suffering he will send, he wills to send you as an act of reparation for the sins which he, by which he is so offended and of supplication for the conversion of sinners. Yes, we are willing. Then you are going to have much to suffer, but the grace of God will be your comfort. As she pronounced these last words, the grace of God will be your comfort. Our Lady opened her hands for the first time, communicating to us a light so intense that as it streamed from her hands, its rays penetrated our hearts and the innermost depths of our souls, making us see ourselves in God, who was that light more, clear, more clearly than we see ourselves in the best of mirrors. Then moved by an intense impulse that was also communicated to us, we fell to our knees repeating in our hearts, O Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I adore Thee. My God, my God, I love Thee in the most blessed sacrament. After a few moments, Our Lady spoke again. Pray the rosary every day in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war. So this was 1917. World War I was raging in Europe. Can you tell me if the war will go on a long time, or will it end soon? asked little Lucia. I cannot tell you that yet, because I have not yet said what I want. Then Our Lady began to rise serenely, going up towards the east, until she disappeared in the immensity of space. The light that surrounded her seemed to open up a path before her on the firmament, and for this reason we sometimes said, that we saw heaven opened. Once the apparition disappeared, Francisco was the first to notice that the sheep had strayed and invaded a field of green plants. Fortunately, there was no damage. Luckily, wrote Sister Lucia ingen ingeniously, we did not see anything eaten. Our Lady appeared on the little home oak tree for about ten minutes. I do not believe that she ever remained long enough to recite a rosary, said Sis little S Lucia. What is astonishing but quite well attested is that Francisco saw the Blessed Virgin perfectly, but he did not hear her words. He only understood the questions of Lucia. As for Jacinta, who saw and heard everything, she never brought herself to speak to the apparition. Thus Lucia was the only one to have the privilege of speaking with her. So, very simple, isn't it? The, the words of Our Lady, pray the rosary every day. And the key mess, part of the message is, are you willing to offer yourselves to God and bear all the sufferings he will send you as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and of supplication for the conversion of sinners? So you see, the main desire of Our Lady and Our Lord is reparation to the heart of Jesus and Mary and help them rescue souls from falling into hell. That really is, that's really the heart of the work of the redemption, isn't it? The whole reason why God the Son came down and took on our flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary and was born in the middle of winter, shivering and cold in the, in the stable, and living a life of a rough life. Because remember, the family had to flee to Egypt and survive in Egypt. And with many trials and many crosses. And they lived 
as nomads in Egypt. So all these crosses and all these difficulties surrounding those who love our Lord. And that is a legitimate complaint. Even St. David in the Psalms says that, Lord, why does it seem that all the, your enemies seem to do well and they seem to prosper in this world and everything goes smooth for them and they've got all the material things they need? Why does, why does the things go well for the, your enemies and we, your friends, seem always struggling and seem always uh, hit with many, many crosses? And the answer is because, one, God gives his gifts to who he wants. It's his wisdom. It's his love. But to many who live offending God and will go to hell, they have their reward here on earth because God is just. So they do some good deeds. They open the door for a lady. They, 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 they might be generous or at least honest at work. God always blesses and rewards. But if they live breaking his commandments and not loving God and not in the state of grace, they won't go to heaven. So many who are destined for hell have it pretty easy on earth. If you remember the, the story of Annette, Annette went to hell and uh, wrote a letter to Claire, her friend. And she said... She died in a car accident with Max, her husband. And these people weren't all that bad. They weren't divorced and remarried. They weren't wild partiers. They, but they were just comfortable sinners. Comfortable in living without God. And she went to hell because she was in mortal sin. And that morning, she said, it was a beautiful sunny morning. And she felt the call to go back to church, go back to confession, go back to Mass. Of course, this was in the 1920s and 30s, so they had Mass everywhere, and it was only the Tridentine Mass. And, but she didn't. She, she, she said no to God. It was a definite no. Stop bothering me. And that day, she was taken in a crash. And she told uh, Claire, she said, in my life, had, my, had God given me more crosses, I may have saved my soul. So when God does give us crosses and tears and thorns, that's actually a good sign. So we should thank God who loves us and cares for us so much that he will, he will measure each cross perfectly for, for our shoulders to carry individually and as a family. <coughs> And then when you look at the whole message of Fatima, it's very beautiful. It's approved by the church, of course, and Fatima is backed with a miracle that surpasses almost everything in the Old Testament. All the miracles of the Old Testament are surpassed by the miracle of Fatima. With the sun uh, for a crowd on October 13, 1917, the sun zigzagging and giving off multiple colors and the colors penetrating everything, reds and blues and yellows and gold, and every, even the trees and the grass looked gold, witnessed by over 70,000 people, including Freemasons and communists, who had to re report it in the newspaper because everybody saw it, and a, a whole region around Fatima. Now, there's, um, there's a speculation that because the government officials kidnapped the children and tried to stop them from seeing the August apparition, August 13th. The Freemasons tried to threaten the children and kidnap them against their parents' will. Because of that, the miracle of the sun was only local to Fatima. But there's an indication that Our Lady made that it would have been the whole world that would have seen the miracle of the sun. But because of that, God, as it were, kind of punished the whole world because of these, <coughs> these Freemasons. So when you look at all, everything about Fatima from A to Z, it just confirms every detail of our holy Catholic faith, that there is the true God, the Holy Trinity, 
Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, who are three divine persons, one God, yet three distinct, not separate, distinct persons. That's, that's highlighted everywhere in Fatima. And then adoration to God and reparation for sins and how sins offend God and, and wound the heart of Mary. On June 13th, she'll appear with her heart surrounded by thorns, her Immaculate Heart. And that's what God wants, is to establish devotion to her Immaculate Heart. So that's our happiness. That's our treat from heaven, to live at a time when everything is easy now through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Because our Lord knows we're in a tough time in the history of the church. But from God's point of view, it's never been easier to become saints, never been, been easier to sanctify our life, to love God, and to gain heaven. It's never been easier because we have been given the most precious gift of God, the heart of Jesus and Mary. And then add to that the sacred face of Jesus and his five wounds. And then Fatima also reemphasizes everything about the Mass, that it's the sacrifice of Christ, and he pours out his precious blood and all his graces and mercy over all souls, over the whole world, for those who thirst for him. Fatima emphasizes hell. On July 13th, she'll show the children hell and the horrors of hell. And they're just going to see it for a few minutes but it's enough <laughs> to frighten them deeply. And they see the beasts of hell, the devils. They see the souls being tossed. And that shows us an insight to one of the sufferings that we often don't think of in hell, which is the loss of equilibrium. Just think how you and I appreciate just getting up in the morning and putting our foot on the ground. And standing up on solid ground. But imagine having no solid ground. If you've ever been deep sea fishing or on a ship or a boat in, in heavy waves, you feel like many people start throwing up because you get seasick. Because there's no equilibrium. You're always moving and that motion sickness gets people pretty sick. Apparently St. Saint, Saint Francis Xavier suffered Cabrini suffered this when she crossed the Atlantic to the U.S. Tw over 20 times, and she was also dead scared of water. <coughs> so in hell, there's no equilibrium. There's no just having a break and standing on solid ground again. They're always upside down, sideways. There's no, you're just always in a state of looking for solid ground. That's one of the sufferings of hell plus the fires and the screams and the stench. So, and then in this first apparition, here's a, a girl that's not even 20 yet, and she's in purgatory till the end of the world. Of course, maybe it's possible because of God's mercy, many people have prayed for this soul, and maybe she's in heaven now. Because God can be moved to mercy. But Our Lady just made the point that's her sentence. It's till the end of the world. But when you do pray for purgat souls in purgatory, they, their sentence can definitely be shortened. But Fatima emphasizes heaven, purgatory, hell, the battle on earth, the scourge for sin, which is communism and socialism. And, and communism means not just the military aspect and concentration camps, and mass famines, and genocides. It's not just that, but uh, she speaks about the errors of Russia. And when you dig in a little bit to what Our Lady really means, you discover it's Freemasonry and Judeo-Freemasonry. The synagogue of Satan that persecutes the church, hates Jesus Christ, and wants to rot the West with immodest fashions, which little Jacinta will say, our Lady will be so offended by the fashions to come in our time. And the immodest fashions in Our Lady will say also, many souls go to hell, most go to hell, 
because of sins of the flesh. So she that's part of the aspect of communism is rotting through pornography, filthy magazines, drugs, the legalization of marijuana, the incorrupt the corrupt fashions, the corrupt movies, the corrupt music. The whole cultural revolution is what Our Lady meant. And then also, she also meant, because Pius XII made this reference when he read the Third Secret, about they're going to change the Mass. They're going to change the breviary. They're going to change the sacraments, which happened at Vatican II. So that's part of the Masonic communist errors of Russia that Our Lady speaks of is that the actual overthrow of the Tridentine Catholic Mass and the sacred liturgy of the Catholic Church and the sacraments. So that's all part of this whole revolution. It's a complete overthrow of the order of Christ the King to bring in the order of the Antichrist and Satan. And then Our Lady uh, mentioned, there's also the emphasis on angels and guardian angels and the role of angels. And how close they are with us. At Fat the whole message of Fatima is just a beautiful catechism on the holy Catholic faith and the kingship of Christ and how our Lord must reign because Our Lady and the later apparitions, Our Lady um, will ask and our Lord will say that if the Pope will not obey my mother, the ministers of the church will undergo what happened to the king of France. That is, he was arrested, betrayed, and beheaded, and his whole family slaughtered. So if that's true, we can expect the... maybe not the physical killing of the popes, but maybe the corruption of the popes, which is certainly what we're seeing now. The corruption of modernist Rome. So everything in, in, in the message of Fatima is just re-emphasizes every detail of, the, of our holy Catholic faith. So we should love our holy Catholic faith because it's, it's not mine, it's not Father X, Y, or Z's, our Bishop X, Y, or Z's, our Pope X, Y, or Z. All the Catholic faith are all the truths we must believe from heaven. It's really that simple. Unless you become like little children and believe as little children, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven, our Lord said. So we must believe all that God has revealed like little children. And that includes the six days of creation, the flood of Noah. Because modernists always try to explain away the six days of creation and the flood of Noah as with scientific explanations. But in fact, honest science and this is happening more and more recently, actually, in the last 10 years. Honest science confirms six days of creation, the young age of the earth, the flood of Noah everywhere, because all the fossils all over the whole earth just confirm the, the flood of Noah, that it was a universal flood. And not like the Father Paul Robinson, the, the new modernist being promoted in the new SSPX, he's constantly harping on pushing this this modernist evolution. He would have been condemned under Pius X, this Father Robinson, because he believes in the local flood, which, which doesn't make sense. If there's a local flood, Noah could have just picked up with his family, traveled 50 miles, and get out of the area. <laughs> he didn't have to build an ark. So, so that's part of the destruction of the church, is the modernist attack, which 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 we're drowning in right now. But we got to love our Catholic faith, understand our Catholic faith, and fight for our Catholic faith. And coming back to the main message of Fatima, reparation to the heart of Mary, five first Saturdays of devotion, which you can do if you don't have Mass, you just make a spiritual communion and make an act of perfect contrition as best you can. That's And God sees that. And He will reward you with the same promises as if you had the real Mass. So, five for Saturday, reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and help save souls from hell. 
So St. Teresa of the Child Jesus said, Lord, I love you, and the way I love you is to scatter roses everywhere. And what are these roses she speaks of? It's just the little sacrifices. The little sacrifices of every day. The cold, the heat, the dishes. And to do our chores without complaining. And to do our chores well, and not half, not halfway. And do it with the intention to make to pull out a thorn from the Immaculate Heart of Mary's heart bleeding and to help them save souls from hell. This is really serious because I've been preaching now for 25 long minutes. And in these 25 minutes, that's over 200 people have died on the face of the earth. Probably more, 500 people. It's every minute there's like 10 people who die on the earth. How many of them are, 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 have saved their souls? How many have fallen into hell? Most go there. So this is what this, the serious business, the business of businesses, is to save souls. And that's why it always puzzles me. Why do... Why in the world would someone want to give their life to money making and business making and and defending the one world government in the military, which is no longer defending our country? They're trying to destroy our country. Why would anyone want to give their life to anything but the glory of God and the salvation of souls, which is the happiest life on top of that? As a priest, as a brother, as a nun consecrated and married to Christ, Girls, what could be a better husband than our Lord Jesus Christ, who loves his brides? He's rough on his brides, it's true, but every husband can be rough on their, on their brides. That's normal, uh, with a loving way, of course. But our Lord, when he, when he treats his friends, and especially his brides, with many sorrows, you know, many of them bore crowns of thorns on their head and suffered for our Lord to save priests from hell. Our Lord would appear to Sister Josefa Menendez and said, appear to her at 10 at night and say, my daughter, there's a priest who is about to go to hell. Will you suffer for him to save his soul? She says, yes, Lord, I'll help you. I am nothing, but I'll offer what I can. And he put on her a crown of thorns and she wore that all night long, suffering. And it caused her intense headaches and migraines. And she felt nauseous all night long. But then our Lord would come to her the next morning, smiling, and said, Thank you. The priest has come back to me and made a good confession. So that's what it's about, is saving souls. That's the business of business, of all businesses. The occupation of all occupations is the glory of God and salvation of souls. When you get down to it, that's all that really matters. And all the money, all the businesses throughout the world, they all die, and their businesses die out and fades away. All the trophies, the athletes and the movie stars, everyone, all those trophies, when they die, people don't want them. They're put into antique stores or just thrown away. They all fade away. Such is the glory of this world. It passes away like, like a wind. But those who love God and help him save souls, our Lord elevates them and often has them canonized. And everyone prays and honors them. Think of little St. Therese, a humble Carmelite nun, or St. Theophane Venard, a missionary priest who wrote to her and asked her prayers. They're in the glory of heaven and everyone honors their name. No one really knew them on earth. But now everybody knows them. So such is the way God treats his friends. They are always exceedingly honored. So let's turn to the Mother of God. Let's beg Our Lady of Fatima. After Mass, I'll present the relic of the tree, the tree of the where, on which Our Lady stood. And the people say when Our Lady appeared on the home oak tree, the branches actually lowered. So Father Gruner, a great apostle of Fatima, he used to say that Fatima was unique because, without going into all the theological distinctions and details, 
it was actually the physical body of Our Lady that appeared, which is unique because most apparitions are not the physical body of Our Lady. But Fatima is unique because it's actually her physical body that stood and came down on earth. So let's put our, all our love and all our hope in the heart of Jesus and Mary. And let's pray often throughout the day what Our Lady asked when we make a sacrifice, when we do something for the love of God. Oh, my Jesus, it is for the love of Thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in repara reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us here of course to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us here of course to thee. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.